fixing to start, so I just wanted to put, put you on speaker. All right, at 6.02, I'd like to call this meeting to order and announce the presence of the forum that the meeting is duly called and the notice of the meeting was posted in the timely manner required. If Barnwell, would you lead us in the word? Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. Thank you for all your many blessings. We know we have, everything we have is just due to you. Um, be, be with us as we deal with everything that we're dealing with in our school and our community. Just uh, help us, guide us through these troubling times in a way that's pleasing to you and that's best for our school, our staff, our students, and our community, and all the things we do, not just during this troubling times, but all the things we do. Help us to come together as a community and, and work together through all this to make us better people. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
before we do, uh, I wanted you to know this, that we're going to show you something on this, just as one part of the possibility here that we're going to be trying to do is, as far as offering instruction to our students while our normal school operations will be ceased, if, if y'all go through with that. But this might be good for you to know before you make that kind of decision, make that kind of vote, because one thing that the commissioners let us know is that if we close school, and but we still continue to make an effort and attest to it to instruct and teach our kids, whether it be through technology or paperwork packets or however, or through any other kind of technology, then we can rest assured that we're going to continue to receive our funding and we can continue to pay our people, and that's good things. I mean, we got folks that you know we don't want them to miss a paycheck or anything like that. So. And we certainly don't want our kids to miss instruction. So is it going to be the same? Is it going to be the perfect? No. There's no way for it to be. We're dealing, like I said, with something that's uh, ever-changing. And it's uh, we're just going to have to deal with it as it comes out. Uh, and I just wanted y'all to see one of the things that we'll be using. It's called a Cellus. Jay and Lynn have been uh, talking about this and working it up. And it's some things that we're going to be sharing with our teachers. And it's a learning process, too. But... I don't know, Linda, you want to take it from here? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I know Jason had asked if we could take a look at basically what this would look like. And the reason we were thinking this would be a good option is because it gives us the, a route to provide everything in one location rather than things being kind of all over the place. There will be other resources that might be out there and can be used, but this still gives us a general place to provide most of our instruction and point our parents and our students to one place for reading, math, science, social studies, and some other elective courses as well. And it does provide a teacher with a video instruction and in short segments, it has pre-test, post-test. The our teachers can go in and reposition, uh, put them, put the students where they feel like they need to be, but it goes, you know, through the full year of instruction. Um, so anyway, I put in a, just a sample student with some classes. And I'm just gonna kind of go into each of these and show you like whenever they first click in on this math class, it's gonna give them a pretest at first. And then they would go through this and then they'll get to their beginning instruction. There is a student orientation that we can put in here, but I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory without it. I mean, they go in, they see that there's a pretest, they answer that and it'll take them to the first video. I'm gonna go back to one of these and just show you one of the videos and then how they're short so it's it's not too long so that they're going to get bored with it they're fairly short and then they have questions that they answer if they don't do well it usually will take them back and have them do it over again and it for some reason in here it takes a little longer for the video to load so <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the four different kinds of conflicts that we run into in stories. Now a story is not a good story unless it has this something that shakes it up a little bit. And that's where conflict comes in. Conflict is something that causes tension or a feeling of unease. It makes life uncomfortable for the character. So a lot of times when we start a, a story, we, we are introduced to who they are and where they live and kind of what their regular situation is, but then something happens which causes the, the character to feel nervous or to feel uneasy, something that causes the action to start to roll. Now, there are four kinds of conflict, so let's talk about each one. The first one is called character versus self. And as you might guess, this is when a character is struggling on the inside or with themselves, okay? This kind of conflict is known as internal conflict, which makes sense because internal means inside. So it's happening inside the character, so it's internal conflict. An example of that is when Sue has to decide whether or not to cheat on a test she didn't study for. We've all had conflict with, with, within ourselves, even if it may not be this kind of situation. It's kind of when you have your conscience telling you one thing to do. You want to do one thing, but you know you should do the other. It's that battle inside of your own head that is character versus self. All right, so the teacher will teach the lesson. She's not, right, she'll teach the short lesson and then it goes straight into questions right behind it. The student an answers <coughs> that is based on what she's teaching here. And the stuff that's being taught, the, uh, the, the subject matter is based on the text that our teachers teach also in, in other 
Yes, it's but based on the standards that the students are having to cover. Yes. But at least it's not our students having to film themselves to teach the No, right. and so it's something we're able to provide in a timely manner with this being kind of quick. We'll have this all up and running and ready to go this next week. All right, is there anything, I mean, as far as sitting here watching a lesson, mm -hmm. I don't know we really have to do it unless y'all no. want to, but is there anything in there no. as far as the components of that lesson that they, they would, the board would need to know about how it works as far as uh, once the student gets involved, is how, what's the interaction at that point? What are the, as, as far as the teacher-student interaction, yeah. within this thing, right, the, the program itself, it just has questions and things. And the then it would, take care of that part. then our teachers would need to be touching base with the students at home, whether it's through email or giving a call periodically to just check and make sure of how they're doing. Okay. And the reason we felt like we needed to show this to you is because we have a cellus in place, mm -hmm. but we don't have it. We don't have it to the. We only we, use it for a certain group of students. Yeah, we use time. it for some students that are maybe off campus for a certain amount mm -hmm. of time, whether it's in DAP or whatever. Right. And to handle all of our students, all of our 1,275 students or so, we're going to have to purchase more. Is it? more software or more licenses? Or right, we have to purchase more licenses to cover because we only have a just a small amount. And this afternoon you were talking about it's going to be about $30,000. Yes. Now, that sounds scary normally. However, uh, the uh, the commissioner has confirmed to us and Clint and Mr. Clint Coyne and Mr. Walker, a lot, of, a lot of us have been involved in these teleconferences every day. He has Rest us, made us. So he said, "Rest assured, you're going to be reimbursed for extra expenses that you have to be that are incurred during this. Mm -hmm. Whether it's extra people on board, uh, if you have to pay for extra cleaning supplies, if you have to pay for extra um, transportation, whatever it entails, or paying a, a overtime, even something like this, I would think would be easily uh, justified if right. we attest to it's helping in our instruction." And we turn this in now can i guarantee that i can only go by what the commissioner's telling us okay but i want john to know about this because if we come back later and have the uh, budget amendment dealt with in, a, in the amount of thirty thousand dollars i didn't want y'all to not know what we were doing okay do y'all want to continue this or do you want to just kind of let us handle i can it? make all of them a copy of this sample student because this is just one i created a fake student and i'll give you all a copy of this and you can just go to acellus.com and access it at home and look at it more if you'd like to so at the end of this video a student would then have some exercises to do yes they work. they will they'll have some exercises to do there might be i mean there's different things that's going to come up in here but they do short video short instruction and then they follow it with asking questions of different types to make sure that they're you know, listening, checking their comprehension of whatever it was, and then they'll go on to the next set if they're ready. And these questions have been asked. Uh, uh, and well, there are periodic tests throughout as well. Well, students that uh, uh, are not going to have access to computer technology devices or internet services and um, maybe even I mean, we can communicate by phone, we can communicate by email, we can communicate by regular mail, and we can send home uh, hard copy paper packet stuff. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ways that we're going to need to communicate with these students to show that we are making a good and diligent and valiant effort to give them some instruction. Is it going to be perfect, like I said a while ago? No. But there may be several students that, that they learn fine this way, you know, and then there's going to be some that really need to, they're going to miss some of that one-on-one -on -one and face-to-face. -face. But um, it's, I think this will be a good purchase. It's something that we can use, you know, for a longer period of time if we need right. to. Right, it'll actually cover us all the way through this next year. And there are probably some subject matters that won't, that really can't be, I don't know if they're, all of them are covered or whatever, but our most, our core subject, subjects and all that kind right. of stuff will be covered. Core subjects plus can a few. Pull up, I know that it's earlier when you were showing mm -hmm. the, um, at the meeting yesterday we had, um, it listed a lot of different classes. That right. Um, helpful for others to get this too. Well, what, and one of the other things is the flexibility of this, that we can send Chromebooks home with people that need it. We can send home 
um, hotspots for people that don't have internet if they have cell service. We can, and students can also use their own devices if they want to, if they if they have that, so that it's it's very um, accessible to everybody and it's it's convenient to. Right. So, Mr. Walmart, can I ask a question? Yes, this is Ned Pertuzzo. Yes, sir. We're planning on setting up <clears throat> packets of work and packets of, of different lessons that will be uh, that can be picked up and or delivered and or mailed if needed to these students. It depends on the needs of each one. That's why it's going to be good to have um, many of our other staff, like our at-will staff, our aides, and those kind of folks that can assist our teachers in gathering those packets and getting you know contacting those students making sure we understand which ones have te technology capabilities and which ones don't. Uh, it's just gonna be a work in progress. Okay. I have a spreadsheet that I'll share with y'all as well that he did send me, uh-oh, I bumped the wrong thing here, that he sent me that does have all of the courses in it that's a little easier to look at than having this long yeah. scroll. But it's, it's very impressive to see. Yeah, that. I was just sitting there watching. I'd awesome. like to take some of these courses. Yeah. <laughs> you can find this by just going to the acellus.com and then clicking at the top where it says for schools, acellus for schools, and then at the very, or scroll all the way down and you'll find all the courses. But there's and quite a few that's in here. CTE type classes. Yeah, we have several that are CTE that's in here. We've even got art, you know, some, well, music appreciation, it's not art, but, um, but there are several of them. They're not all here, but it still gives us a pretty wide range. I, I was impressed, you know, because the thought is like, oh my gosh, we've got to, you know, teachers are going to be recording lessons and immediately getting them out, and that we already own the program uh, that was as extensive as this is reassuring. doing this for the end of the school year like we're doing it he said it would roll all the way through next school year so we'll have it all the way through the end of next school year what we normally pay? Um, we normally pay 3100 3125 is what it is for 125 licenses but this is for 1270 yeah. uh, about 10 well times. we added 1150 licenses is what we did only the ones that we needed so by assuming you have to have the license for the teacher, every teacher as well as every student, or do you just pay for right. the student license and that covers the teacher? Uh, no, we had to do those, the teacher licenses also. Um, that's it, it is additional for the teacher licenses. It's an expensive program, yes. it, it is. But, it, but it's a, a good lot. program and it's covering it. You know, we, we did this with the students that we use it for to make sure that we were covering that teacher part. The self, the, the direct instruction part, which it is, they're short clips, but it's still, they're actually getting to see someone and hear someone talk, not just having something put in front of them to read on their own. You just comprehend it a little differently and you can see and hear someone. Did you see all the languages and the HVAC technology? I mean, it teaches a lot of stuff. to the student information system so that's updated nightly so we'll be able to get this communicated but you know I'll, I'll tell you uh, we're the, those systems are, are you know they're they're only up to date as much as the parents give us up-to-date information student information that contact information if they'll get back with with those campuses and get that information updated we'll pick it up just shortly after that next night so all those messages at the front desk at the that's right if you'll if you'll call those campuses contact the front the principals or those principal secretaries 
they'll get that information yes, relayed. And that's probably something that we'll need to communicate out to uh, to all of our, uh, our our staff and our or in our communications is to make sure that everybody has their most current emails and phone numbers and all of that information. It's it's really imperative that they get all of that information to us, and then that will allow our systems to uh, to be used effectively to communicate. Jay and Lynn, I appreciate y'all getting that ready to kind of show us before what we're going to attempt to do there. I don't have any other campus administrator reports unless I may have any questions for Jay. Uh, Jay, This agenda item allows the board to consider closing school, or what I'm calling cease and normal school operations due to the ongoing national state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Normal operations, including student related events and other community events planned to take place on the grounds or within the facilities of the district should be canceled to allow people to practice social distancing as much as feasible in order to assist our communities with mitigating the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Through a good faith effort, our teachers and staff will continue to offer instructional opportunities and food service provisions for our students during this closure. More information on this subject will be communicated to our staff, students, and parent guardians as we move forward with this ever-evolving situation. We understand this is a difficult situation for all concerned and there will be many inconveniences and problematic issues to arise from such a closure. However, it is in the best interest of all concern for this action to be taken. That's why that's going to be my recommendation to the board. I want to say to the public, um, I know there's lots of folks that's going to be dealing with child care issues, uh, work issues. Um, we, uh, to use a, to, for lack of a better term, we slow played this probably longer than most other schools. If you keep up with this, almost every other school in Northeast Texas is closed at this time. The only two that haven't, and one is Karnak, who's tied to us with students, and they were waiting on us. And I believe as of today, Elysian Fields may have still been open, but Cass County, Bowie County, all of them are closing, Longview, Marshall. Um, so I don't want y'all to think we're, we're behind them in making decisions. We've been dealing with this just as soon as they were. As a matter of fact, we've been on, I've been on uh, multiple group texts with other superintendents all across the region uh, it just so happened that we were on spring break at an, a, a good time. We didn't have to make a decision as quickly as others. Um, so our staff and our students are on break now and it's given us an opportunity with our good administrators and good folks here giving up some of their spring break to allow us to plan for some of this. I, 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 I mean, I will apologize for any inconvenience that this is going to cause for our community, but I will say this, the CDC and the information that we're getting from our health department are indicating that it, although our students are not as susceptible to, the, to bad results from this illness, they're more resistant to this illness, they can sometimes be silent carriers. They can have it and not even have any symptoms whatsoever. And we have a, a high, I wouldn't say a high number, but we have a significant number of staff members up here that have compromised immune systems for whatever reasons you know what whatever illnesses they've been dealing with they've been fighting off other things they may have asthma they may have diabetes heart issues those folks are at high risk and not we don't always just try to protect our students we're we're always trying to think of our staff too and so all across the country everybody is it seems like every entity that you can think of are taking steps to try to mitigate the spread of this thing. And the most, the best way to do it is to try to separate and not have big gatherings. They still don't know about the vaccine. They still don't know about how everything about how it spreads or how serious it can be. And, um, and I still hear people saying, well, it's just like the flu, I believe. Well, CDC says it differently. It's, it is worse than the flu. It, uh, it's substantially more <coughs> contagious and it's substantially more deadly especially with those people that's got those issues. So I hate that we may be losing some events. People have been talking about the proms and this kind of stuff and the things are coming up. I know those are important to people, but lives are 
in my view, more important. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I can say looking forward except for when I make this recommendation, the recommendation is going to be that we um, close or cease normal school operations through April the 3rd, which is a couple of weeks after spring break. That means there won't be any practicing, there won't be any uh, UIL events, which UIL events are canceled anyway, and I think they're even extending some of that. Um, if they're, you know, Mr. Walker, you're in charge of the high school campus. I know the prom, the next big event coming up on your, your slate. My suggestion would be, if where's that held at? At the transportation center for the winter meeting this week. If if there is any way for it to take place it, it, with parents involved and kids involved and us not involved, that's a whole separate issue. But I cannot say that we would support that. We could not have. Uh, staff there, we couldn't have supervision there. Uh, if it's taken on, I've seen this happen before where it's taken on by the parents or some of the uh, more leaders, uh, the leader type seniors, such as Austin, uh, that it may try to take place anyway. Okay? I'm not going to condemn that and I'm not going to support that. But I'm just saying that school events at this point are going to be canceled through through that time. If the board approves this and, uh, and, and, and moves to approve my recommendation, um, I'm sure you've got questions before we go any further. What would be the plan for the food service provisions? On the, okay, yeah, that was another thing I was going to mention. On the food service pr provision, I mean, we've been meeting about this too. Um, all, of our, all of our students get free breakfast and lunch when we are in school. We're going to continue to provide food to our students. We're going to figure this out as we go, but our um, immediate plan is Jack here. Yeah, Jack is working closely with Stephanie Holman, our uh, food service director. And she's also working with our other administrators too, but Jack is going to be instrumental in this because he and his, his folks are going to, um, in the planning phases, we're thinking this will work, deliver, as in bus routes, the food that would go to these students. Since they know their bus routes and they know their stops, we're gonna communicate with these folks and tell them, hey, we're gonna be bringing food to you. And it's gonna not be the hot spaghetti meals. It's gonna be things that are uh, have a shelf life, you know, and uh, Miss Holman used the term, I can't remember what she used. Non-perishable. Non-perishable. <laughs> My brain is just about fried, y'all, I'll tell you. I'm about worn out. The, uh, we're going to be able to give them breakfast and lunch every day. And, and we've, we were talking about different things, like we might take a week's worth at one time or whatever, but I don't think we're going to do that because someone might not be able to make it to that particular bus stop for that day. So we're going to plan on doing it every day. We're expecting to get reimbursed for our mileage and our time and all that stuff anyway. We're going to keep, we're going to keep hopefully, meticulous records on all that. We're going to get reimbursed for the meals. There's, we're going to use meals that are reimbursable through the federal government uh, agricultural department. Uh, so that's how we're going to do that. But we also know some students don't catch the bus. Some We don't know wherever, wherever a kid lives. Some kids get brought to school by their parents and some kids drive to school. So we're also going to have a pickup point at, this, at the district for, for them to come by and just give us those kids ID numbers and pick up those meals. Okay, so we're probably going to do that at the high school. Is that what she's been talking about, Jack? Yeah. <coughs> so that's where we stand on the, the food uh, provision. Uh, and if all goes well and we're only out a couple weeks, then we'll just be getting our feet on the ground and learning how to do it when we're back in school probably. Uh, however, the CDC and other professionals have indicated that to truly mitigate this sort of thing, you're looking at a longer time than two weeks. So what we're planning on doing, that's why in my recommendation, um, I want it to be, um, I, I would hope you consider that as we monitor this and we get daily information, uh, if we're two weeks out, as we get into that first week, if, we, if I deem that if we need to extend it for a week, each, each week we need to be able to have that opportunity to do that without necessarily having a board meeting every I can talk to y'all about it and kind of keep y'all updated, and I'm going to be communicating with not just administrators, but um, state health officials. Uh, there may be times that we need to just to keep extending that, 
Okay, so that couple of week window gives us that opportunity to evaluate and then another week to prepare for the next, you know, the next set of actions that we might need to take. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I need to explain that any better? Bob and Flush was thought on having delivered by bus that keeps our bus drivers working that way they, they do get a check. But probably what they said they would deliver both meals at one time. That day? Mm-hmm. Instead of, you know, drive doing two routes or the route twice, but they'll do it yeah. you know, one one route. But it'll keep them working, making some money. And, and here's the great thing about our folks. Uh, I mean, we had a meeting today, and actually a couple board members were there. And by the way, it was not an illegal meeting. We didn't have, the board members didn't take any action or anything, uh, just for everybody out there to know. But after we brainstormed this and threw a few ideas out, you'd be amazed at how well our folks start getting together immediately making plans. Jack and Stephanie working on, all right, I've got a plan, and Jay and, and Lynn and the principals are working together. Uh, it's, it's things that, as a leader, you don't really know how to do certain things, but it's pleasing to see everybody just take it and run with it. It's really great. It's been, it's been good. But I'm, I'm getting off task there. Yes, that's what we're going to do as far as providing the food. We're going to provide the instruction, and that should allow us to uh, receive the funding to pay our people. Now, is that going to be a perfect scenario either? It's not. Uh, We're going to have aides, hourly employees, custodians, maintenance folks, teachers, some of them on contract, some of them not. There's another agenda item in here, a resolution that's going to allow us to pay these folks as normal, whether they're doing something remotely or if they're doing something on campus um, because we don't know how it's going to work out. We don't know how it's going to pan out. The, uh, there may, may be some of our staff that we say, you go home. You've got, a con- uh, you've got a compromised immune system. And I wouldn't want that person to have to use up their leave days or, and or run out of leave days and not get paid just because we're, sit- we're facing a pandemic. And so TASB and our policies and this resolution allows us to have that flexibility to do that. So I know that's the next item, but uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Anybody have any questions? I just want to one thank you, Mr. Bonnell, for not only keeping us informed the last couple of weeks, very, very regularly, but also in allowing uh, board members to sit in on your once again having a meeting with your leadership team and it was I think eye-opening in that you knew there was a lot involved but to hear the details that are involved and what it means to close your school while continuing to provide meals and academic um, support Um, and so I think just the scope of what the challenge is was eye-opening, but I think the other thing that was reassuring was how much thought has already been put into, and what do we do? So I said we may be one of the uh, last districts in our area to take this step, but I feel like we're probably one of the best prepared districts going into this and you know it's not something we wanted to have to do or felt like there was a need to do but I think the fact that you know the luck of the draw you know our spring break happened to hit us that we're you know assuming we we take your recommendation and we have our vote but that on a Monday we can tell families that we prepare a a week from now when your children won't be coming into class. And I tell our teachers, you know, be prepared for, this is how your job performance responsibilities is going to be transitioned. Because it's not that everybody's going home and you know, sit around and watch TV and play video games because there's, it's still, school's in session, it's just not in session here. It's in you know, 800 homes where we've got children. And that's the kind of the way we were portraying that today in the meeting is that 
you know, one question was asked about what are we going to require students for regarding the grades and how much work and how are we going to determine promotion and graduations and all that kind of stuff. And I said, I don't know. Our principals don't know yet. But we do want to take this perspective. We're in a unique situation that we've never been in before. And we are here as service providers to help these kids keep getting food and instruction the best we can. And hopefully our parents out there in the community will assist us in those endeavors. I mean, that's the way we're looking at it. We're not trying to make anybody do anything, but we're gonna provide everything we can to you while we're going through this hard time and try to come together as a Bulldog family. Okay. Yes, sir, this is Ned for Tangelo. Yeah, it's almost like, and I agree with you, Mr. Patangelo, it, 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 we almost have to trust even more that folks may actually act more mature and more responsible than they normally would. I mean, we're going to be asking for some extra uh, consideration from the parents and extra diligence from students because it's an unusual situation, and uh, if we don't take those steps to be uh, as mature as possible, and take on these responsibilities in the right way, then we're not gonna gain anything. We're, we're gonna lose, and I don't want us to lose anything. I want us and I want us to move forward and, and get through this year. Um, I think it was said today at our meeting, it's a good thing that this happened during our last quarter than it did the first quarter. I mean, we've got pretty much established a lot of things uh, that uh, we're lucky to have done at this point. Um, I know we've still, like I said a while ago about graduation, we've got to deal with class rank and those kind of things, and Mr. Walker will be um, uh, communicating that with all the staff and the teachers and stuff like that, but long story short, every day is, is new information and it's changing as we go, and as we move forward in, in this situation, it's gonna be changed even more. The good thing is we're not in this by ourselves, um, communicating a lot and the principals and our directors can communicate with all these other schools that are going through the same thing. We don't have to reinvent the wheel every time something comes up. So, um, and we are getting some, I, I've been pretty critical of the commissioner in the past. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty open-minded and pretty uh, uh, reasonable most of the time, but I've been pretty critical of him. And I will say this publicly, I'm, I'm proud of his leadership and what he's been telling us so far. I mean, you, those of you that have been listening to uh, this situation, he, he's coming through for us as far as trying to take care of us and giving us some flexibility to, to deal with this situation. I still disagree with some of his philosophies, but on this situation, I'm with him. And he, uh, he's doing a good job to help us out. Well, as you mentioned grades, and I think it's important for people not to focus on, well, how will I be graded? but to focus on the, the ultimate goal, which is learning. And I think the fun thing about this is Bella's program, it's a course. So if you're taking, it won't be here, but if you were taking French two semester one, you would work on that class. And when you got to the end, you completed that class. You would learn what you were supposed to learn in taking that class in an online, you know, in a school setting. setting. So, um, it isn't totally open-ended, just keep learning stuff. There are classes, and when you finish a class, then you then there's other options. And as, as, as Lynn has uh, reminded us all several times in some of our meetings, this is new, a lot of this is going to be new for many of our teachers, too. They're going to have to be trained in, in how to use some of this stuff, and, and if some of this doesn't work for them, there, there may be emailing, there may be uh, things through ClassLink that Jay was showing me earlier. 
there may be other ways that we have to get this instruction to the kids, uh, and that's fine. That's okay. There may be an offset type class that just, just doesn't work for it, that we may have to film ourselves doing that lesson or whatever and take care of it in a different way. But uh, I don't see, with, with the success we've been having in our admin meetings, I, I am more confident now than I was a few days ago because I see how well people work together. I think we're going to come together and this is, we're going to make it work. We're just going to make it work. And then hopefully this uh, curve of uh, illnesses, the, the percentages will finally level off and start coming down and we can go back to life as pretty much as normal as possible. I think we need to plan for the long haul. Clint Coyne said it best today. Yeah, we've got a plan for two weeks ahead, but really we need to be prepared for the rest of the school year because we don't know how bad this is going to be. We just we just don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. So whatever we put in place is going to get us to the end of the school year if we need it to. I recommend that the board close school or actually cease normal school operations through April the 3rd, 2020. And I further recommend that the board give me the authority or the authority to the superintendent to extend that date as needed, depending on how the situation develops as it is assessed on a weekly basis. So moved. Second. So a motion by Mr. Abernathy, a second by Mr. Lane Bartels. Any discussion? All in favor? Ned, are you going to vote? Say your name and vote. I'm with you. Motion carries six All right, now we'll go to action item seven, consideration of adoption of the of a resolution to allow the district to pay exempt and non-exempt personnel during a time of emergency closure as allowed by the law. One of the things that employees are um, asking and will be <coughs> continued to ask is uh, how, how's it gonna affect their day? How's it gonna affect their pay? How's it gonna affect their responsibilities? Um, some of that we know, some of that we don't know. It, their responsibilities are gonna be shifting and changing. They may have been used to working with uh, one teacher or, or this particular student or this particular area. All that's kind of off the table at this point as far as the responsibilities go. Uh, we're gonna try to keep it as normal as possible, but as far as our um, payroll or human resource department goes with the support of Commissioner Rath, like I kind of said a while ago, I believe that we've got uh, things in place so that we can pay our folks. A uh, long time ago, it used to be difficult to do this sort of thing. If, especially if you're an hourly employee, you may be home doing some stuff remotely with a student or emailing or whatever, and whatever time you're doing there, since you weren't at work, it was very difficult to pay them for that kind of stuff. This, this resolution, with TASB support and TEA support, we can, um, we're more flexible at this point. And uh, we may have all our teachers up here next week for a few days as we do some of this planning, but there may be some times when they're not in that classroom. And that's fine too, because that's what we want is distancing anyway. So uh, we don't know exactly how it's gonna work, but at least this res resolution will allow us to be able to pay uh, those folks as needed and if any of this payment is above and beyond normal, that's another thing that Mike and I and everybody's talked about. We're gonna be uh, documenting that closely and making sure that we can justify whatever we submit to the state as far as funding that we need uh, above and beyond the norm. Okay, I make a motion we um, adopt the resolution as printed in the agenda here. A motion by Mr. Godfrey, a second by Mr. Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? All in favor. In favor. Okay. State your name so we'll have it right. Motion carried. Motion carried 6 0. Now we go to action on item 5 consideration of approval of consent agenda. On that consent agenda, that's basically taking care of the SLS uh, budget amendment. I thought it was going to be 25000 No, it was 28750 and then we had to add the teacher okay. licenses. $30,400. There's no need to explain that anymore, I don't think, Mike. Mm -hmm. Is there two? One for the furniture and equipment, or is that all one? It it's coming done. out. Um, it's coming out of the furniture and equipment. Okay. okay. Motion. 
Again, I appreciate everybody's uh, hard work so far. I know um, closing school is going to be even more difficult for many of us. I mean, um, it, it doesn't get any easier, I don't think. And, uh, uh, if any of y'all out there in the community have questions, concerns, whatever, give us a call. Uh, email us, whatever you need to do to contact us. We're going to be everywhere, and all, all normal operations are going to be a little haywire so just find a way to uh, get a hold of us and we'll get back with you but uh, I, I feel good about dog country <laughs> if there's no other I'd like to say one more thing all right yes sir I would like to thank you and Jay and Lynn the administrators all of our staff for the good relationship uh, going forward and making sure that we do the best for our our students and our district I really appreciate all the time and efforts you guys have spent on this Thank you, buddy. There's no other business. This meeting is adjourned at 648.